Well, that's an interesting question, and you can approach it from multiple angles. I think that, you know, the way that we've approached it is to understand the business context first. I think all too often we get lost in the technology and we're chasing technology for technology's uh, purpose. And I think that in the past, a number of initiatives chasing technologies have failed. And you can think to data warehouses and business intelligence. And I think that when you look at these technologies, for example, a database never solved one problem. It's the applications that sit on the database that solve the problems. And I think that APM and the things we've done inside our company are those types of applications. The way that we've developed them is to assure that we can use these technologies effectively as needed to solve the specific business problem. If you look at the problem in its entirety, you can find that the National Association of Manufacturers in the United States in 2015 suggested that the world manufacturing markets are worth $14 trillion a year. And of course, they've increased since then. But at the time, they actually suggested that up to 10% of all that is lost through equipment breaking down. So if you want to use these technologies, that's probably the biggest problem that needs to be solved. And that's where we've attacked that with our suite of products in the APM portfolio. Starting with a product called MTEL, which is what, what I came from uh, six years ago when we were acquired by Aspen Tech, which is basically designed to stop machines breaking and do it in such a way that we're doing advanced pattern recognition to understand what the patterns mean when it's operating normally what the patterns mean when it diverts from normal, and also what the explicit patterns mean when there's a degradation that will lead to a failure if not addressed or attended to before that degradation and failure occurs. Well, I think that some of the challenges relate to uh, the, the new workforce. You know, the millennials, they don't want to be journeyman uh, engineers uh, uh, spending 10 years to learn a job before they jump in. You know, they're the generation who grew up and are growing up with TikTok. They want to use TikTok and look at a video and click one button and know how to do it. So that's a challenge for people who make products like Aspen Tech. And our goal here is to make sure that the products are learning by themselves. And I'll give you an example. When we detect an anomaly, an anomaly from a base pattern could be a change in the process. Maybe we're running the process five degrees hotter, or it could be a degradation from a piece of equipment that's, that's going into impending failure. And when we look at those, for example, we find that it's a change in the process. Normally, with older style products than ours, you'd have to bring the engineers back in and reconfigure it, and it's quite a lot of work. With ours, basically, the operator himself basically pushes one button, takes the new pattern that's been learned, and adds that to the baseline. So this automatically keeps up with the process changes as they go along. In addition to that, we basically looked hard at the skill set and potentially the lack of skill set that there is going to be going forward and asked ourselves, how can we do that? How can we build the work processes into the product so the product can manage it for the end user? How can we do it so that the deep skills that are required, for example, for us in data science and in deep engineering technology are actually encased in the product? You know, basically, I say it's like the iPhone. The smarts are on the inside, not the outside. And that's the way we formed our product to make sure that people who are the domain experts, who know our machines run, and can basically do extraordinary things with this type of uh, uh, technology without having to be the experts. Well, 
I, I think first off is the integration and interoperation between applications. You don't get one application that's going to solve a whole problem for you. And at the base of our product, we basically used a system that is capable of interacting and interoperating between operations and maintenance systems. The operations systems don't contain it all. The maintenance systems don't contain it all. Maintenance doesn't look after the maintenance by itself. Operations has a, to play a part. So if they're using different systems, they must be able to interoperate and interoperate their work processes to make sure all the activities that need to be performed are being performed appropriately. Asset performance management stemmed initially from processes to, to basically keep machines running, keep them available, and make them reliable. That's still an important part of APM 4.0 as we go forward. But in addition to that, we need to make sure that not only those pieces of equipment running, but they're running at peak performance, producing what they should, producing the appropriate product, at the appropriate yields and qualities. That's important. Then also in APM 4.0, we need to understand the cost and risk of all activities that we uh, plan and execute on those assets. That means understanding what you can change, what will change, and the prob probabilities of future actions. And this is where we merge the man and machine. The machine with AI and machine learning can do extraordinary, powerful analytical uh, activities and bring those answers to the end user. And then the end user can do what humans do best. That's use their cognitive abilities to understand the differences in patterns, for example, and make decisions about what's the best path forward. So that's the merger of uh, the machine and the man to uh, help those uh, activities. I think it's a number of things that we, we address slightly coming into this. Um, it's like the ease of use. We've done extraordinary things for ease of use that I haven't seen in other products. And as we go forward and we see more of this and we see the, uh, the great uh, retirement that's coming and a lot of the knowledge leaving the company, we've had to understand we have to make sure our products can learn those things. And then when the user uh, uh, inherits a problem, we can automatically guide them to the right uh, appropriate action based on what we've learned and what we continue to learn. So that's a big one. The other one uh, is understanding what it takes to actually construct an application. A lot of products are technically so difficult to use and as I said, we kind of in fun founded ours after the, the Apple iPhone where the smarts are on the inside, not the outside and the external people can basically do the work without having to be detailed data scientists or intensely skilled uh, technicians and engineering staff. That's the, the, the basis and foundation of the product that sets ours apart from the others. The other one is to be able to do this with pure pattern recognition. We use machine learning, but the important thing is not that a product uses machine learning, but how it uses machine learning. Uh, we do explicit pattern recognition. We're not just using machine learning to trim models and try to make them a bit more accurate. We're actually doing it that way with pure pattern recognition. So the accuracy of our results, our understanding, our transformation of data, when we look at data, to make sure we retain all the good data and don't throw away good data, that's paramount in making sure that ours is as accurate as it can be.